The checkerboard effect is found underneath the generate category. And because of that, when you apply it to a layer, it's going to replace the contents. It doesn't matter if there are already effects on it or if it has an alpha channel, it's just going to replace the contents of the layer with a checkerboard pattern. Let's take a look at the controls. First of all, we have the anchor point, which just allows us to offset the texture within the boundaries of the layer. Next, we have size from, which is set to width slider, meaning we can scale this texture up or down using the width slider. Or I could change this to corner point. And this is just like the grid effect, where now I have two point controls to adjust the spacing between each part of the checkerboard pattern. Or I could change this to width and height sliders so that I have two individual controls for both the X and Y coordinates of the checkerboard. I'm going to set that back to width slider so that it's just a perfect square. And the next option is feather. And this just allows us to soften the edges of the pattern, both horizontally and vertically. And we also have the ability to change the color to whatever we want. Next up is the opacity, which is for the entire layer, since this effect replaced the contents of the layer. But then finally, we have the blending mode. And this is where we can have the effect interact with the contents of the layer. By default, it's set to none, so it's just replacing the contents of the layer. If I change it to normal, then we'll see the original layer behind it. So let me turn this width back down, and you can see my logo behind the checkerboard pattern. But we could change that to stencil alpha, and then it'll act as a track mat, basically, where those white squares were showing up. And we also have access to all these other blend modes, just like in the layers down here. This is a very handy effect for when you need to make a checkerboard pattern, whether you're creating some kind of a texture or you need to use it as a track mat, it does a great job. And if you ever wondered how you might rotate this pattern, since there is no rotation control, all you would need to do is add a transform effect before the checkerboard and rotate it, say, 45 degrees or however much you want. And that effect will rotate the contents of the layer prior to the checkerboard being applied. Then duplicate that with a control or command D and then move it below the checkerboard and set this number to negative 45. Now, if I zoom in close, you can see that now my pattern is diamonds rather than squares because we rotated the layer, applied the checkerboard, and then rotated it back. And we can tie these values together to make this easier to adjust just by double clicking on the rotation property. I'll give myself a little bit more room, open up the first transform control. And what I wanna do is Alt or Option click on the stopwatch for rotation and just type in a minus sign and then use the expression pick whip to select the rotation property from the first instance of transform and then click off. So now whatever this number is, we'll get the inverse number on the second instance, meaning I can now just change this first rotation and it will essentially rotate the checkerboard pattern. But that's all you need to know about the checkerboard effect. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.